we're now at this bizarre stage where the government um, and the Minister for Heritage, uh, they've just added heritage again to the title, um, is appealing the uh, Judge Max Barrett's uh, decision uh, to save Moore Street, to save our heritage. And we're out here now uh, letting it be known that we want to protect our heritage for future generations. Also, land is now being bought again, um, exchanged between different speculators and developers. So obviously they believe a profit is to be made by it, uh, otherwise they wouldn't be investing. So um, let, them be, let it be known that there's no profits to be made in this. This is our heritage, this is to be protected for us and for our future generations, for little Sam here. Uh, Maureen, can you tell me what stage we're at in the campaign? Um, well, I had a question, another one with the Minister on... Wednesday night, I think it was in the Doyle. Um, so there's going to be a task force. There has a chair has been appointed. So I'm hoping that this will bring everybody together at the same table. Because up to now, the minister was passing the book to Dublin City Council, and Dublin City Council is passing the book to the minister. So there's some chance that everybody is together. And of course, the fact that the court case is pushed back to 2017, um, I think I think we're going the right direction, and we will see progress. Okay, thank you very much. Robert, would you like to say what stage you're at in the campaign? Well, I understand we had uh, good news yesterday in the legal department, probably thanks to the inefficiency of our judicial system, but that uh, we certainly don't seem to be going to have to do anything in terms of, in terms of development uh, until late next year, which gives uh, a lot of time for a lot of things to happen, and I think it's very important for us who are uh, re you know, really interested in retaining this as a, a national monument, mm -hmm. that we do uh, everything we can to galvanise our forces. And uh, I think that's our work in the year ahead. Okay. the High Court judgment appeal from the Minister for Heritage and that is set for next year, late next year, so we've got over a year to see what's going to happen. In this time, a few of us are standing every Saturday collecting signatures. We're at over 50,000 now, public support. Can you tell me what happened here today? Well, today is July the 9th in Dublin City, and there was a, a march and rally, a campaign to save Moore Street. We're here in particular in, in opposition to an appeal by Minister Humphreys on top of Judge Barrett's decision to have um, Moore Street declared as a national monument. It's abhorrent that 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 Judge Barrett's decision uh, should be should be appealed by one of our own ministers who only a few months ago was laying a wreath on Moor Street. The, the irony is magnanimous and unbelievable. So we're here today amongst hundreds of others in support of our claim that Moor Street should be declared and kept as a national heritage monument site to the heroes of 1916. And I believe you've relation as well, is that right? That's that's right, Marcus. It was my, uh, my grand uncle, Christopher Brady, who printed the proclamation, along with the two compositors, Malloy and O'Brien, at Liberty Hall. Well, the stage we're at is the High Court have vindicated the 14-year-long campaign to protect and preserve the Moore Street battlefield site on every, almost every point that we've been making over that long period of time, the High Court have vindicated our position. So it's now incumbent on the Minister, who claims to have been, had no choice based on the advice she received to appeal the entire judgment. But that tells us that there must be elements of the judgment that she, she uh, appears to agree with. And it's important that she announces what aspects of the judgment that she uh, agrees with, so we can move forward from there with agreement. She's, al she's also setting up a consultative forum, which we'll participate in, provided that it has some meaning. We're not prepared to engage in a simple talking shop exercise. So we have to attend the first inaugural meeting, which is supposedly to be held as soon as possible, and we'll find out more then.
but we'll participate in that forum only insofar as we believe that progress can be made, real progress, and it doesn't just become a, a talking shop exercise. What, what stage is the campaign at, Dave? Um, the situation is that um, the court is going back at December 2017, so there's a bit of a delay there. So hopefully that can be good for the cause, as it were, you know? Yeah. Okay. And what's happened today? Today we're just bringing attention to the fact that um, the Minister is trying to uh, reverse uh, Judge Barrett's decision and uh, we want to make people aware of that. I think that's the main reason, because um, there's a lack of awareness in the general public. Yeah. Uh, they think the case has been won. Yeah. Um, but it hasn't yet. It hasn't. That's the thing. So the struggle goes on. So we just want to let people know that. I was here because as an Irish citizen and an a author of books on the history of the 1916 Rising, I, for one, have always realised the immense historical significance of the site and indeed the role of the headquarters detachment of Okanahara and the IRB, Irish Citizen Army, coming them on and running rifles. Uh, from 24th of April 1916, they declared a republic here. It doesn't get any more size than that in our history. And when it became necessary under the intensity of British firepower, including artillery, heavy machine guns, to relocate, they did so. Uh, led, I suppose, at least vicariously by the Arahali and in actuality by others, including Patrick Pearce, to Moore Street, where famously they invested the entire terrace. Uh, I personally believe that the entire section is indeed a revolutionary quarter and needs to be preserved for future generations. Moreover, I'm very cognizant, uh, speaking personally, my father took part in the Woodkey campaign. That was a failure, but it raised consciousness, whereas the, the attempt to save Kilmainham Deepium popular in its day was successful, and these days have been faced as a great example of civic action in cooperation with the authorities. I'm very much hopeful that something along those lines can be worked out here regarding the Revolutionary Quarter. Because this is more important than our generation, this is for all our generations. Okay, can I ask you one question? Just, yes. uh, uh, some historians have said it's not as significant. Would you have an opinion on that or not? Or? Well, there may be people with vested interests in making certain claims who work for semi-state bodies or have other forms of, of, of emolument, or they may simply be simply ignorant of the facts. Uh, with the availability of the Bureau of Military History Archive, which is a treasure trove, it's, it's actually quite clear that Moore Street is far more important than any was realised, mm. that there's a colossal amount of significant activity that took place there. And I'll say just one thing. It is a non-contested non matter of fact that the decision to surrender in 1916 took place within the Moore Street Terrace uh, on the cusp of a potential uh, and suicidal, near suicidal attack on the Parnell Street Barricade. This is quite simply a fact. And any comparable site in the United States of America, in the United Kingdom, in France would be protected.